Adia me bi so mono. Sanye ya omun kanidi. Na kwa aka no. Ama nwa dwiri. Adia mpanimfo oga na abenti menka mo asem. Aba be kan wo fie asem. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. My name is Ambassador Vex. And I am back with another awesome video on this and I will talk about the positivity about Africa and Africans. Guys, you know, today's reader is on Nana Kwame Bediakun of the New Force. We all know that Nana Kwame Bediakun has currently causing, you know, a revolution in the political environment and the Diopoli is feeling it. But recently he has done something or is on the move of doing something that to me gives me the conviction that indeed he's ready to lead the people of this country towards development. So this is what you're going to talk about today. Subscribe to the channel if you've not. Share this video to your loved one and let us move straight forward. Leadership must be predicated on the absolute interest and unification of the people. This has been the philosophy of Nanakomi Bediako's campaign and the guide of his political ambition. Tunfo me nana kwa me bidia ko me se bidimiti apeto wa mamu mie nu ren talk ya de mumie nu boma mu chefa e ya gana intitimu bia ba na akoye se mu so mache ye mu ade a me bi se obo nu sanye ya you get it this is a true mark of selfless leadership and it goes beyond the usual Machiavellian tactics of taking advantage of the disunity just to hold on to power. Now, this is far from politics. But I know that some of my viewers or majority of my viewers that belong to the NDC or the NPP, I would like you to pay attention and listen to this very content. Because I know that the people watching me right now and also the descent that will come will know that some great leaders started something beneficial that would help their country. And also a content creator also spoke about this thing because I know that few years to come, this video will be played to me. You watch the video. His sole motive is to unify great people who have been in banter. And you and I know that the social media has glorified this kind of banter between Chief of Bono and the King of the Ashanti region. Seeing this video, I asked myself, what is Nana Kwame Bidiako wanting to achieve? And has there been any leader or have there been leaders who have tried to unify these great kings or chiefs. What would be the importance or the benefit of unifying these people? These are the questions. And I'm saying, if you belong to the NDC or the MPP, listen to me very carefully. I'm not doing politics, but I'm trying to put the country first because someone is bringing a legacy. Okay. Nana Kwame Bidiakun is wanting to bring development in Ghana. But in his quest to bring development, there are certain things that is serving as a hindrance to his development. So therefore, why doesn't he solve that kind of hindrance before he goes to the main agenda? That's the reason why he went to the chief of Bono. To appease him, that no matter what has happened between you and I or two and four, I will suggest you all should end this violence and put the country first. And you also heard the response coming from the chief of Bono. I'm a prayer, I'm a, I'm a 
Ati am penin for Ghana abe to bring Kamwazen. Have I become it? Yes. That also put me in a whole lot of thoughts. Then I asked myself, aside Nana Kwambi Bidiaku wanting to bring peace between the Ashanti and the people of Ono, that is unifying these two kings, has there been any great leader or leaders in Ghana or in Africa who have tried wanting to do the same? Then I came across two people, and these two people are great people and notable people who have done something for Ghana or the continent Africa. That was Nelson Mandela and Osage for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. You ask me why. First of all, Nelson Mandela. You and I know that Nelson Mandela was a freedom fighter for the people of South Africa. And that is wanting to fight apartheid. So upon fighting the apartheid, he was imprisoned for about 27 years. Someone who was imprisoned for 27 years and coming out of prison would have this black mentality that I am going to punish those who imprisoned me. But our late Nelson Mandela sought to bring in peace between the people of South Africa and the white people. His sole motive was to bring peace between these people. So what did he do? He established Truth and Reconciliation Commission. And the Truth and Reconciliation Commission was a platform for the victims to share their stories and also for the perpetrators for them to also tell their story for the people of South Africa to give them amnesty. That is, if you're a victim, share your story. If you are the perpetrator, come so that you beg and for us to forgive you. Basically, that was what the Truth and Reconciliation um, Commission did for the people of South Africa. Upon doing that, he unified these two people instead of dividing them. And this initiative brought together the whites in South Africa and the blacks in South Africa instead of dividing them. That is why the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, the platform created by Nelson Mandela, is notable in the history of South Africa. Now, let us come to Osage for Dr. Kwame Nkoma, the first president of the land, someone who played a notable role or a significant role in the independence of Ghana. Dr. Kwame Nkoma has been noted for someone who has brought about unity among Africans. He envisioned the Pan-African unity that there'll be a time colonialism and imperialism would go. If all these things are not there, that means the whole of African continent or the countries within Africa should unite. So what did he do? The formation of organization of African unity, that is all Asian. Now it is called an African Union. Formation of this thing brought the sense of unity among Africans. Basically, I'm just trying to talk something about unity among people and how it will impact on national development. Now let us come back to Nana Kwame Bediakum. Nana Kwame Bediakum, as I said early on, wanting to bring development in Ghana, is wanting to bring unity among the people of Bono, in the Saudi Ashantis. And you and I know the importance of unity in a country or in a specific geographical area. Those who are not all that experienced in life, because of this banter between these two kings or these two chiefs, a person coming from Bono wouldn't like to associate with someone coming from the Ashanti region because even their leaders or their chiefs or their kings are not in talking terms. Wanting to unify them will bring about reconciliation, will bring about social cohesion, will bring about a national development in the country because it will attract so many people to be in business with these people. For all you know, there's, there's an investor who is an Ashanti. There's a, there's a business person who's, who also comes from Abono. Because of this banter, these people are unable to get, come together. By unifying them, we we'll bring them together, wanting to also yearn for national development. Just bear in mind that Nana Kwame Bediakon is not a politician. He's a leader. So ask yourself, as a citizen of Ghana, watching me right now, have you ever heard 
leaders or a leader in Ghana who is a politician who has dared to unify the king of Ashanti and also the chief of Bonham. But such a young man like that has been able to set up a garden or a meeting with the chief of Bono, wanting to appease him, offering himself or his head as a sacrifice for them to come together because he knows their sense of unity in his political um, um, career, that is his leadership in Ghana. So this action or this effort being lead signifies that indeed he's ready to lead the people of this great country. If we're a honest person, you will know that indeed his effort is very significant and should be noted in the history of this country. Because if you and I should be asked, has there been any political figure or a leader try to unify these people? You wouldn't have any other person than Nana Kwame Bediakon. I'm having the positive conviction that when he goes to Otunfo or Setitu, the powerful man on the Ashanti kingdom, and I know he's a man of wisdom, he's a man of vision, knowing the bigger picture of this great country would also give in to his appeasement. And when this happened, you and I will know the kind of revolution that Nana Kwame Pediakon has already started and will also continue to cause in this country. Nana Kwame Pediakon might not be one of your favorite persons, but I know because of this then, we will think twice about what we need as people in this country. I know I go online and so many people have been saying bad stuff about him just because he's a young man and wanting to cause a change. So many people are saying that he's being financed by the Russians. And so therefore, he's not a genuine person. He has a particular interest. But I don't see all these things, all things being equal. I am going to support whoever has good policies. And I know that at the end of 7th December, whether they go for the first runoff or the second runoff, you and I will know the favorite person that the people of this great country will choose to become president. You might not be chosen to be the president for 2024, 2025, but I know that someday, if he continues to do the good works, he will be our president. So I want each and every person watching me right now to tell me honestly at the comment section what he or she thinks about the assets by Nana Kwame Bidiyako visiting the chief of Bono and appeasing him to unify with Otun for a certainty of the Ashanti kingdom. What do you think about it? I'm saying he might not be your favorite person, but I know that this action will make you think twice. My name is Ambassador Vix. See you next time in another episode. Sokoto. Mayande. Mayande.